Hello, this is part two of Mini Robot Development Dog. This is a smaller robot dog project than my ongoing Open Dog project, which is about a meter long and weighs 50 kilograms. And I'm doing this project to really see if I can make a robot dog walk dynamically before I return to the bigger project. So this robot is driven by RC servos, which are geared down, but we also have compliance in each joint. So each joint has two fingers held together with a spring that lock that joint rigid until force is applied and then the fingers move apart. And that also moves magnets nearer or further away from a Hall effect sensor. So we can sense how much force is being applied and make the dog joints compliant or make it react however we want. So, so far we set up a filter and just had it follow that force and return to the middle when there's no more force and that made it act like a big virtual spring which we can actually go and tune in code. Last time I built a single leg and this time we're going to put the rest of the dog together and try and have a look at the electronics. And that looks something like this. So we've got all of our four legs now and as well as the joints we had last time at the shoulder and the knee we've also got that additional hip joint which moves the joint sideways there, moves the leg in and out and of course all four legs do that. Those joints as well have the fingers and they have the magnets and Hall effect sensors. So we've got 24 magnets, 12 Hall effect sensors and 12 geared servos. Now I've tried to make the body a bit like a frame to save weight. We're not sure quite how strong these servos are going to be at the moment, but I think they should be strong enough. So I need to put electronics and a battery in there somewhere. So for now we're going to make this, see how rigid it is, and if we need to make it more rigid I've left screw holes to put additional plates in, top and bottom, so we can try and put some plates in to make that more rigid, and we need to hold the battery probably on the bottom in any case. So let's get those parts printed. But first of all this is just a quick ad for ways you can support the channel that makes all the difference to the projects. I have Patreon and YouTube channel membership where you can get access to all my videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and be part of that discussion. There's some affiliate links in the description for various things and if you use those links to buy something or to sign up, there's a couple of free trials there, then it won't cost you any more and I'll get some money. I also have a merchandise store where I sell Open Dog t-shirts and other merchandise with various pictures of things I've built on over the years. All right, let's get those parts printed. So that is the majority of the parts assembled. We've got two right legs assembled, one I did last time and a new one. And then we've got the other leg here. So for now I've just put zip ties onto the screws that I would hold the springs, just so I can put this gear in and try and get it assembled because the springs haven't arrived yet. Every joint will have that compliancy with the spring, the Hall effect sensor, and the two magnets that I've glued in. So those are partially assembled. And we've also got this middle section here which holds all of the legs. So this is the middle section for the dog there, which of course holds those legs and allows them to tilt the other way. So each one of those has a gear. Again, I've just zip tied up where the spring would go to to hold the gear in place so that would come out of there we've got an axis that rotates all the way through with that compliant mechanism and that goes onto two servos there with another place at the other end and we're actually going to run all of this on eight mil studding which will run all the way through the dog and the rest of the frame is built around it so there's that middle assembly together it's obviously quite substantially sized already i'm a bit concerned about the size of the servos but they are geared down so hopefully it'll be all right so this is the axis of course that moves that leg sideways and we've got those compliant mechanisms on all of them. So now let's put the legs on and get a better idea of what it looks like all together. Right, here it is all together. So um, it kind of looks good. I mean, it looks like a lovely robot dog, but I'm not quite convinced about the length of the leg and the servos. This thing weighs quite a bit now with everything on and the extra servo at the top, of course, and the studding and everything else. So um, I think it probably would stand up and stuff, but whether it came to standing on two legs and trying to move dynamically, whether there's going to be enough force in those servos or whether they're just going to get hot and unhappy and fail eventually, I don't know. So it's come out a bit bigger than I expected it to anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is shrink it all down. And if you remember from part one, I built this leg in quite a modular way that allows it to be made longer or shorter quite easily. So this piece that fits in here is a separate section from the piece up here. So we can reprint that and we should be able to make up about 25 millimeters just by moving that servo up. And of course we've got the length down here with the foot on which we can make shorter as well. So we can just bring all of those joints in. 
Around the front's a bit more tricky because these servos need to go closer together and they can't really because of the gears on them. So we're gonna have to move the servos around underneath so we can get this closer together. And of course we can slide the two halves together on the studding that I've left here. So that makes it really easy to make it shorter in this direction as well. So here's the original CAD that we've built already. And here is the new revision. So basically its legs are a lot stumpier. I have put shorter feet on. We have made this piece much shorter and stuck that servo in so it mounts from behind now and that all still fits together and of course move those servos round to the bottom so I can get these gears closer and moved everything in on the studding and made these bridge parts much shorter so you can see it's kind of a lot more compact obviously these bits on top give us lots of space the same amount of space for electronics and so on but compared with the original we can see that it is basically more stocky and the legs are shorter so we should get a much better leverage angle and more force Right, it's back in one piece and that's a lot more compact and it feels much more manageable. But you'll notice one thing that's different from the CAD, which is the legs are facing outwards on both sides. So what I decided to do was turn one half of the robot round so that it's not so nose heavy. There's some clearance issues with the mechanism, which is actually turning the leg in this axis. And so when the legs are facing in the same direction, that means it has to stick out the front. And it struck me it'd be much better to make it balanced and that'll be an easier route to stability. And after all, I'm trying to make my life easy here. So it is of course now completely symmetrical and that's gonna make it much better balanced and that's gonna solve some issues or make it much easier to make it balanced and make it dynamically stable. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. I'm happy with how the mechanics have turned out so far despite those various revisions of the robots, but I think I've got quite a good version now. So now we're gonna put some electronics in and get all those servos powered up and at least see what spring tensions we need so that we can carry on with the rest of the compliancy and the control electronics. So just a quick ad for the component sponsor for this video, which is Cool Components. And you may remember I used their warehouse for testing my Sonic the Hedgehog robot in the last robot series that I put out. So Cool Components are a reseller for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Microbit. They're also a reseller for Adafruit and SparkFun. They sell various components, sensors, the PCBs and things that I'm using in this project, as well as the Teensy, which is going to be the main microcontroller. So go and look at coolcomponents.co.uk for loads of cool stuff. So the first part of the electronics is the power distribution and what we've got here are six volts or at least adjustable regulators adjusted for six volts. Each one is apparently 10 amps. We've got one of those for each leg. So I'm using Adafruit Permaproto in these little 3D printed trays. And we're gonna take one of these to one side of the proto board and one to the other. And that means we've got one per leg and three servos per leg broken out here. So the next part of this is a Teensy 3.6, which is fitted to some more Perma Proto board with connectors at each end. And so far I've wired in five volts and ground for the power. And I've also wired in the pins for the servos, but I've avoided the CAN bus, the SPI and the I squared C, so I can use those for other devices. So that fits in a little 3D printed cradle and there's a lid that goes on top to hold the connectors. So that's all screwed together with the connectors fitted in here. And then we're gonna have another piece of Perma Proto that fits on top. And that's going to have an Adafruit MPU6050 inertial measurement unit and some sort of radio chip that I haven't quite decided on yet. So I fitted two batteries, which are 11.1 volt three cell LiPos and they're around 2000 milliamp hours each. And I've also got the regulators fitted as well. Around the back is a lovely power switch, which turns all the batteries on and provides power to the regulators. I decided I wanted to be sure where the back and the front is, so I stuck googly eyes on the front and the power switch is on the back, but also on the front, we've got a little voltage display that monitors the batteries. So it currently says 11.7 volts, so they need a bit of a charge. So you should be able to see the six volt regulators lit up there. And at the moment, the wires are poking out, ready to go to those distribution boards for the servos. There's also a five volt regulator hidden at the back here, and the wires for that come out and go into my connectors and I've got the team C fitted in here and you can see it doing the blink sketch here with its light flashing on and off. So all that's remaining for this episode is to fit those distribution boards, but we also need to run the servo signal wires over and run them into the connectors in this box here where I wired all the wires to the team C. These white wires are now wired to that box. There's six of them and they go to the breakout board which has the power connected and that means I can power up all of the six servos on each end. So there's springs installed and there's quite a bit of natural compliance. There's quite a lot of bounce in this now. But we don't have the Hall effect sensors installed yet, so we can't see how we can dampen that like we did last time with a filter and so on by actively following that motion uh, with the servos and then dampening it out with a filter. So for now we can see it moves all around and that seems to be quite good. There's quite a lot of bounce in the mechanism and the servos seem really happy standing there. So I've got quite a lot of faith in them 
uh, not breaking, at least not too often. And the springs I've used for now are these, which are, well, point to point, about 30 millimeters long, they're about 10 mil in diameter, and the wire thickness is about one millimeter, and I just randomly bought them on eBay. And then you can see I've tensioned them up with zip ties, and I don't know what the right spring tension is, but that seems pretty good for now. As we move the joint, hopefully you can see that joint complying and the fingers moving. So of course the knee takes most of the tension or most of the force, at least in this particular pose. It depends how straight the leg is. I think the servos are gonna be okay. They seem pretty tough and I've used them in lots of other projects. But basically I think what's probably gonna break is the cheap plastic servo horn, which is what the gear is screwed to. So I've got some metal ones on order, although I'd probably rather break a load of these than the actual servo if there's too much force on them. But hopefully the springs here actually help take most of that load anyway. There is quite a bit of play in the mechanism generally, just because of backlash in the servo gears and so on. Um, you can see that one's quite wobbly, even though it's got holding power on. But actually we really want compliance in this joint. You can see, of course, that mostly it's the spring that's bending. And the same on that one, even though that servo really isn't that firm at all. I mentioned that building this robot was going to be much easier to get balancing to start with because it's symmetrical. So with OpenDog we had an inverse kinematic model which calculated the foot positions from XYZ coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, back all the way through all the joints so that we can move those joints in perfectly straight lines by interpolating through all of the positions on the way, all of those waypoints, and calculating the complex geometry of those three axes on each leg and moving them all together so the feet didn't move away from each other and it didn't tear the robot apart. So we are going to calculate a kinematic model for this and an inverse kinematic model so we can do those three axes of translation and three axes of rotation. But initially, of course, if I just pick up diagonal legs and I do the same motion on those two legs, then the whole thing still stays perfectly balanced. So for initial testing and walking on the spot, trying to use the inertial measurement unit and trying to use the compliance that we've got in those joints, the same way we did with the test dogs to see if we can make it stable, that testing should be much easier to start with. Important questions answered, it weighs just under six kilograms, so it weighs 5.9 kilograms, that's with the batteries in and everything. That's the end of this video. Next time I'm going to be installing 12 Hall effect sensors, the inertial measurement unit and a bunch of other stuff. And then we're going to try and make it dynamically stable by varying compliance on each side in response to the inertial measurement unit like we did with the other test dogs. So this project is going to be open source. If you'd like to support me on Patreon and for a YouTube channel membership, then please do. And that really makes a difference to all the projects. I'm not publishing the CAD and code just yet because I'm building as I go and I don't know what's going to happen. And I don't recommend building along with me. Although if you are a patron or a YouTube channel member, just drop me a message if you want the CAD and code and I'll send that to you. So thanks again to Cool Components for sponsoring the electronics in this project. That's all for now.